super strict to a schedule. And I'm like a lot more like free flowing, like just train how you want, man. It obviously works because we have such great results coming out of this gym. Do you see there is big news in Jiu Jitsu? Do you see who got booted out of his school? Keenan Cornelius got kicked out of Atos, Atos or he was asked shut, to leave. Shut yeah. the front door. Keenan is gone for his first world title. Keenan has done a lot for this sport. We're in a weird position in Jiu Jitsu now where people make their livings off of being different. Suddenly, Keenan is left on his own, no gym to train at, no black belts to train with. What's he gonna do? I've kind of been forced into this situation. I would like to have a place where I can train consistently. He has had um, a rocky road on his way to this world. So that sets up Marigali versus Keenan. Yeah, that's a, it's a good year. It's a good year. Hey everybody, welcome to episode number two of Into the Wormhole with Keenan Cornelius here with Keenan. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Happy to be here and I'm excited for what we got planned today. We we just uh, put together something kind of fun right before we opened up, so I'm happy to show it to the people. How are you doing, man? How have you been? Oh, good, man. I went to uh, Dallas for Fight to Win over the weekend, so that was, that was pretty cool, being back working at an event. So was that your first time seeing jiu-jitsu in person again? For a while, or were have you been to any other sort of like tournament prior to this? Previous no, to this, I think maybe the last one I went to was the one that you fought Roberto at, the one in uh, Costa Mesa. Right. Yeah, that was the last one for me too. But have you trained at all during this time? Like, have you gotten any rolling in or any like seen no. jujitsu, or was this your first time? Did it feel like you returned back to home? Did it, it did feel, feel familiar? Good. It did feel good. Yeah. It, well, it felt it felt different because there was no crowd and everything, but it it still did feel good. Uh, but uh. I haven't been training. My my gym was closed for a couple months. Texas, the gyms are back open. My gym just reopened this week, but I've just been too busy to go in. But it's like, it's like uh, I think they're 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 rolling and stuff. But it's like you have to sign up and have one partner beforehand. So like it would be like Mike and Keenan are in area one, and that's my partner for the entire right. class, basically. Yeah, I mean, dude, that's just great news that jujitsu is coming back. I think we were all scared for a while that it was going to be indefinitely suspended, but I'm happy people are taking action to do what they want to do and. Um, I think we've reached a point where it's t it's kind of time that we progress in that direction. So I'm stoked. Can you uh can you give me a breakdown on what happened at the fight to win? Because I've been super busy. And I didn't I didn't actually watch those matches, but I'm familiar enough with the competitors that I feel like my imagination can fill in the blanks if you give me the the synopsis. All right, I'll give you the the whole the whole rundown. I show up, three hour drive there from Dallas. I get get to the Hilton. Uh, everything's shut down. All you can eat is a at the vending machine. Uh. That was sort of a miserable experience. So going back next week, I'm going to a better hotel with, with uh, a coffee shop and everything. And uh, but So you get to the event, and even I had to sign a waiver as media, right? Like, uh, So everyone has to sign a waiver. They were limited to like 50 people could go in there, and it's like they hold this little red light up to your head to check your temperature or whatever and ask you if you've been around people who are, are exposed. And once you're done with all that, you're good. And then once uh, we get to the event... It's uh, so there was two events last weekend. It was Friday night was no gi matches. Johnny Tama beat Ethan Krellinston. Oh shoot! Really? Yeah, yeah. I don't know was, Johnny Tama's no gi background, but I, he's I was no gi kind of, world that champ was one this match year. I was interested in. Twenty nineteen, he was he's, a no gi world champ. Yeah, he's Light handling weight. it, dude. That guy stole my poncho once, though. He told me Luckily, about it on the podcast yesterday. He re he returned it. I, it's back in my possession. But we had some friction over a poncho. He explained I got this nothing on, against the guy. He explained this on our <laughs> podcast yesterday that he stole your poncho before. But <laughs> yeah. uh, he was, he, it actually came up uh, during a story where he said he met Craig Jones at your gym, and that's how he learned the uh, escapes that he used to get out of Ethan's heel hook was when he went there to return your poncho or some, some, something along, something to do with your poncho. Uh, Dude, that, there's, some, there's something about that poncho that it, it – I don't know what it's doing, but it's maneuvering around the jiu-jitsu community. When he gave it back to me, I was like, you know what? This isn't my poncho anymore. I'm just going to let it. I'm going to surrender it to the the powers that be. And now I, someone else has it. I don't know what happened to it anymore. It's just moved on. Uh, and then so he beat Ethan by a uh, referee decision. Uh, it was a pretty close one. Uh, uh, the main event that night, Cyborg beat Trator by rough decision, but it was it was a pretty decisive victory. Cyborg was on top the entire time. Uh, you remember Trator, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he fought him in Ogi pants. So Cyborg was on top, basically wrapping both of his legs. Uh, 
trying to pass. And then uh, the next This kind of gives was, me an idea. I think in the future, for future uh, wormhole episodes, we should do like almost like a fight companion breakdown after these events. Because a lot of people don't catch the fights, you know, don't catch the the consistent fight to win events. It'd be cool to do a quick recap and maybe highlight some of the key details and attacks that we liked yeah. and break them down. Yeah. This weekend, this weekend, the one is pretty interesting. It's Edwin versus Benson Henderson and, uh, Lovato versus Arnaldo Madonna and the geese. So maybe we could go and, and look at some of that stuff next week. But, Absolutely. Uh, the something to look day, forward to for those viewers. They, they did something weird this last weekend where it was back to back show. So the Saturday event had two Guy main and co-main. So Gabriel Almeida from Checkmat beat Roberto by referee's decision. It was a wild match. That was a wild match. It was like, I wouldn't hmm. want to score that one in fight to win rules. It was like they both attacked a million submission holds, but, uh, uh, yeah. And then, uh, I thought Gabriel deserved so that, it. Would you say that was a battle of, of the mindset we were talking about earlier? Yeah. You well, think that represented it a little bit? A little bit. I think Gabriel was a little bit more strategic. Uh, mm. Well, this is the thing. Something that you saw was a big factor this last weekend was when I did my, my weigh-in interviews, right, everybody's like, oh, yeah, I'm in shape. My training's been great. And then you see everybody go out there, and you can see the variety in the training that's been going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That's a, that's, that's a big right. thing right now. Not everybody's training with their regular people. Yeah, absolutely. If a lot of people are limited to a few training partners, and it yeah. feels like you're getting good training because you're in there, but you're only as good – as your best training partner, you know? So if you only have a few guys in there, if you're holding anything back to like kind of work with them, if you're, they're not quite at the level of a high level grappler, like these guys are, it's, you're going to be left lacking something when you go and face another high level grappler that is also training. Like maybe he just has one training partner that's really kicking his ass and that kind of pushed his cardio to a little bit higher level than someone else who might not even notice that their cardio is not super good yet. I noticed that as I kind of ramped back up into normal training, I thought my cardio was good. And then Connor came and he had been training and he was able to push me harder than a lot of the other people I'd been training with. And I felt the difference and I was like, Oh sh snap, I got to get my cardio up. So yeah, that's definitely something that probably played a part. Yeah. And Anything then, else uh, happened in there? the, uh, main event that night was one I think we're going to watch later today. It was, uh, AJ Agazarm versus Keishinho. Uh AJ came out with uh, two pairs of nunchucks, uh, swung those things around, and uh, ended up going to fight Keishinho. And Keishinho, uh, I mean, he told him up. Like, Keishinho was all you over know, him. But I think we have to give respect where respect is due because it's very difficult to pick up a new martial art like nunchucks and immediately surpass your jiu-jitsu skill level with it like AJ has. So I think we need to appreciate that new martial art he's picked up and hopefully he has some success in some nunchuck competitions in the future. I think he's getting ready and I think he's I think that fight showed that his nunchuck skill is ready for the, the big time. Yeah, well uh one of our guys, I had a guy from Flow Wrestling uh out there with me that interviewed him afterwards and AJ explained to him that uh he wanted to step it up this time. Apparently he did fight to win before and he had one pair of nunchucks this time he did double nunchucks. So he was really trying to put on a show for the fans. So next one, he's coming out with one in the, like a pair in his mouth too. <laughs> stuff going. Dude, he always raises the bar. That's what I love about that guy. That's what I'm saying, no matter dude. What it, was, it is, it was fun to have AJ back, dude. He's a character. He's 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 not boring. That's for sure. Yep, I totally agree. And and this is something about AJ. Is it's not an act. Like what what people are seeing with AJ, that, that's a, that's AJ, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's fair to say. Yeah, <laughs> it does yeah. seem like the level of. He, it almost like it's almost like it seems like he's intentionally being absurd sometimes, but he's just he's just kind of an absurd person, yeah. you know. And this, you meet people like that, and it's kind of like, wait, is is this actually happening? And it is, it's actually happening. Yeah, AJ a, exists. There's some villains in jujitsu that you meet him, and you're like, oh, it's actually a really like, it's, they're not like that at all when you when you talk to him, right? But yeah, it's like AJ is uh, that, that's not a character. That's really AJ. But it's exciting to have him back. So another thing, after this show, uh, your movie comes out. You watched your movie, Ronan? Yeah, I, I just watched it shortly before this, and I, I feel like you guys did a, a really great job. Just on the like the editing alone was so, so well done. The subject matter, having it be me, I mean, I, I look at it a little differently, like the whole story and how it played out. And there were some, there's some parts for sure that we, there was just no footage of. Like that, there was a... In the, in the video in the the movie 
documentary, whatever we're calling it. it. We only really documented a little bit of Atos and a little bit of Gracie Baja, but I actually went to um, uh, Unity, right? And trained with the Meows oh, yeah. and yeah. Levi and Bones and Murillo. And then there was one other place. Oh, and, and Henzo's. We did, there was no footage of there from when I was at Henzo's during that year as well. But I feel like it, it still summed up the the feeling and like what actually happened and well not what actually happened but what actually what i actually went through is like a growth process and i think there there's definitely something in there for everyone to kind of learn mainly just on how you perceive yourself in relation to your academy but yeah it was really well done i'm excited for people to be able to see it yeah good good job by reed i mean stepping up and you know coming up with a movie out of thin air out of, out of uh you know old footage or whatever so I, yeah i watched it today too i thought it was pretty cool so that'll be coming up soon after this comes out so we're gonna get into some match breakdown stuff what's the first match you wanted to watch today keenan oh we've got a we got a quite a selection here i think we're gonna go with marigali versus leandro at copa podio and do, do you know what year this one was at i'll look it up right now what year not, this was 2016 i believe but let me let me look that up all right i got it up here on my end when you guys are ready. Yeah, we got it. We got it up. Oh, wait. It's not working. Well, give me one second. All right. No hurry. I'm looking up right now when the match was from. I believe it was from 2016. Yeah, 2016. Shoot, this, was, this was going so well a second ago. See if I can get this open properly. Yeah, so this was from the Copa Podio, uh, I think, Heavyweight Grand Prix. Leandro was in there, Max Jimenez, Marigali, I think Dylan Danis was in there. So it was a good event. This was, uh, Copa Podio was pretty sick back then. They used to have some good round robin cards. Yeah, I'm going to have to pull it up on that other, um, the other view here. Oh no, now it won't let me view it. Here we go. All right. Good to go. All right, we're all good? Yep. All right, let's pull that thing up. Uh, let me see if I can do that. I think it might hang up on you. Yeah, just leave it. All right, I can do that. There we go. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Marigali versus... So I didn't I didn't actually see this one live. This was one of the ones I heard about later as well. So this is my first time breaking it down fully. But I'm going to give you some of my observations that I've I've seen and Copa Podi operates under a pretty short time set, right? It's 6 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Short matches. That's correct. Yep, 6 matches. So one, six one matches. thing I want to one thing we were talking about a little bit before we started the show is how guys like Leandro they're not really, and I, I think uh, this was mentioned in the video, t the movie that Reed made as well, is guys like Leandro, they just know how to win. And if you look at what he's doing, it's not necessarily like hyper-technical, like you're not seeing some sort of very clear application of technique that's allowing him to beat people. It's almost like pure mentality. And who's, not, who's to tell if that's like something that he works himself into on his own verbal like internal dialogue or if it's part of his training or like a training environment but one thing's for sure marigali is more intense right like it seems like marigali comes to matches more with more aggression than leandro does and leandro is one of the most aggressive fighters there are but he it seems like leandro almost bides his time and waits to be aggressive whereas marigali is 100 percent aggressive from the go you know mm -hmm. yeah and this was when Marigali was a brown belt. Yeah, he so was this, a, a phenom brown belt. Yeah, you know, so he everybody. didn't. He doesn't win this match then, right? Because he didn't beat Leandro until uh, World's final. Uh, was the Black first belt. Time, World's final was the first time he beat him. He was zero three against Leandro going into that World's final. Yeah, so this will be interesting to see what's kind of changed in Marigali's game because I did I did a little bit of study on Marigali before I fought him. And so, first thing I want to talk about here this this point of a match. So right here and hopefully you can at least see that what i'm referencing mike yeah, for but sure. before a grip is made like this most this series of events that has to transpire before someone makes a grip decides a 
huge portion of how the match plays out. I think it's like what happens right here before the match actually starts is one of the most influential moments in a high level grappling match because whoever gets the first grip gets to do something first. Right. And Leandro kind of he's good at biding his time. He waits for people to engage on him with grips and then usually just relinquishes the guard pull. So it's a it's an interesting strategy he takes. So he doesn't like risking pulling guard because if you pull guard, there's an inherent risk of someone shooting for a takedown as you do it. And it's incredibly difficult to time. Mm -hmm. And there's a little bit of a stutter step that has to happen because it's literally a rock, paper, scissors match that occurs right when someone makes a grip here especially at a high level. So the second someone makes a grip, for instance, Nic uh, Nicholas initiated the first grip here to the right collar of Leandro, right? Mm -hmm. So Leandro has some options when that happens. He can immediately look for foot sweeps to this inside leg. This is the leg that uh, Marigal is leading with or potentially like a knee tap to this leg or even something to the outside leg. But that's really your best option when someone's engaging and pulling guard on you like this is to look for an immediate two points. That's a way to secure a lead right away. So Marigali has to be aware of this. And that's why there's almost like a moment in time where you have to fake your guard pull. And it can happen on like a microsecond basis. Like you, you reach for the... Uh, you reach for the grip and you have to think, okay, am I going to pull right off the grip or am I going to wait one second for them to shoot on me to try and steal the two and then pull guard. And you see me do that a lot in my matches. I'm constantly like grip, wait for a second and then pull because so many people try and steal the two on me because they know my guard is pretty dangerous. Right now, yeah. Leandro never does that in his fights. He never tries to steal the two. That's something I noticed about him. And so right off the bat, because Marigali got the first grip, he gets to attack first. Leandro is immediately off balance, defending his single or his, uh, De La Hiva X guard that Marigali is famous for. Right. So like, you don't want to re relinquish these grips in this position to someone right off the bat. And th this all happened because Marigali was aggressive and moved first, right? The grip he pulled with, he's got it deep in the collar. He's immediately attacking. He's got sleeve control. He has this really powerful De La Hiva X position that he's so well known for. And you just have to defend against this. And this was the deciding factor when I fought Marigali. Like, my main goal is just to stay out of that De La X, right? Because he's so good at getting it from all these positions. And you can see that, Mer uh, that Leandro wasn't fully prepared for it. Like, Leandro's got this crazy base and ability to just not get swept when it matters, you know? And it matters most in the very beginning of the fight. So, Leandro's looking to break these grips and get grips of his own so he can initiate his passing routine that he starts getting into. But I've noticed over the, over the years, Leandro almost has slowed down. Like he he doesn't like to be as aggressive early. He just bides his time and waits for the right moment. And it's inter interesting to see the it's almost like the changing of the guards with Marigali and Leandro. Like I think Marigali is going to be the guy that replaces Leandro's rise and dominance, right? And Marigali actually got the sweep there. So let's go over that sweep. Let's move back a little bit. Now this is something I talked about with Mikey and Tommy the other day what you're saying about Leandro's guard pull. Yeah, he's he doesn't approach it like the way a lot of guys do, where they just like go get the collar, get the grip, and just jump right into it. Yeah, he kind of gives it a second to see what's going to happen, which is an interesting, and I wonder if it's a conscious strategy or he, that's just what he likes to do in training, so he does it. But it's a, it's like a neutral way to start a fight. Because if you're confident on top or bottom, which Leandro is, yeah, well, usually you it's actually better to be on top because top has just the inherent advantage of gravity. And in the gi, it's a little more fair than in no gi. In no gi, people want to be on bottom less. But if you're really confident on top, you should be on top. It's just a better position to be. All right. But that can be counteracted because Marigali made the first grip. So this whole beginning of this match, Leandro's purely on the defensive. He hasn't made a single offensive movement, right? He doesn't have any offensive grips. He's not able to set up any offensive attacks. So he's just forced to just eat all of these attacks by Marigali over and over and over. And that's because Marigali has established the tempo of the fight and can just keep attacking. So you can see here his deep Deliva X stopped working. He immediately throws on the lasso here. The lasso is just to control this wrist. And you can see in here, Leandro's hand is actually down like in Marigali's crotch instead of more up here like on the thigh where people would leave it if uh, they weren't trying to defend. So he's trying to weave his hand out to this side to clear that lasso grip immediately. And that's what you have to do because the lasso is such a dominant hold. It can really stick you in these positions and 
just leaves you at their mercy if you don't clear that grip immediately. And that's one of the only effective grip breaks you can do, right? Yeah. So what happens next is because he secured that control, he sets up sort of a reverse Dele Hiva lasso position and catches the heel right here. So he's going to wait, catch the heel. He's got it with the right hand now. Uh, Marigali's gripping Leandro's heel down here. All of Leandro's weight is this way, right? So he's carrying the weight of Marigali. That's bringing all the weight down onto Leandro's right leg. So this is the the load-bearing leg, we could call it. This leg is kind of light off the ground here. You can see his foot's kind of off the ground. It's light. It's not controlling anything. So if the weight of Leandro is taken out from underneath him, the support strut that's holding up all his weight, that's what's going to result in the sweep here, okay? So you can see that this sweep worked because Leandro did not expect it. And this is actually a very unique sweep. You don't see this ankle pick lasso sweep very often. In fact, Jamil this is does the first it. time I've seen Who does? Jamil, I've seen Jamil hit this before. He does reverse yeah, it with, 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 with the lasso. Yeah, it's rare, though. It's yeah, rare to see sure. this kind of position. And it's, be, it's rare because uh, Leandro's hand here is free. So he can use his hand and immediately get free access to this near side lapel, which is like one of the best grips you can have from top position. And if he had grabbed that, he probably wouldn't have gotten swept in this direction because he would have had an anchor point on this sleeve or this collar here to control himself and not get him knocked over. But he was still in defensive mode. He's not thinking offensive. This is an offensive grip to get this because it immediately starts setting up a pass attempt because you can still long step this way even when someone has your lasso arm trapped right here. So it's kind of interesting to see that the aggression actually made Leandro make the mistake of not securing this grip. And obviously you could say, oh, if he got the grip, he still might have been swept. But I mean, that hand's not doing anything, right? It, what is it doing? It's just going to help him balance by, by waving around. Obviously, you should be using that hand. And obviously, like, Leandro's beat me a million times. I'm in no position to give advice to him directly. But this is just a concept that kind of applies across jiu-jitsu. You don't want to be going rodeo style, right? And you people can force you into these mistakes by being aggressive. And that's why mindset is so important. You have to be aggressive in these positions because it can make even the most talented and experienced grapplers make very simple mistakes that are really just an absence of mind in the situation because they're so focused on just not getting swept. So look what happens. So he catches that ankle. Leandro kind of thinks about gripping something, but his balance is too, too uh, unstable. So he's constantly having to reach with his hand and look for new ways to base in different areas to make sure he doesn't get tilted in this direction. Right. So there's a there's a misdirection here going on. Marigali has control of uh, Leandro's upper body. He has control of the lower body and he's constantly off balancing in this direction and in this direction at the same time. So it's kind of a pick your poison situation if because you can see the the balance line is always between your opponent's two feet. So that's the line of balance. Right. So sweeping him in this direction, not really possible. Sweeping him directly this way, like over the top of uh, Marigali's own shoulder, not really possible. So the sweep happens either here or here. And just Leandro's arm signifying trying to base in this direction is showing that Marigali is off balancing in the opposite direction of the way he actually wants to sweep, right? Because he doesn't have control of his hand. So he really can't sweep, in the, sweep him in this direction, but the off balance alone makes Leandro worry enough about it that now he's exposed to this side where there's no base. He can't base with this right hand. He can't base with this right foot. So this is the danger area. This is the danger area he, Marigali wants to sweep him to. So look what happens. Boom, right there. So that he off-balanced him in this direction. Leandro defended, and then that left him open for the, rec like the movement right after that to sweep him in the direction that his base was off, right? And right here, that's actually a subtle detail, too, that people kind of miss. And something I try and teach to my students, actually, whenever you're, you sweep to a double guard pull position, there's a false sense of security here for most people. The double, double guard pull position should be a neutral situation, right? Like, what? why can't Leandro just come right back up? Well, it's because Marigali immediately did the proper thing and got that grip on the pants. He switched from his upper body control grips that he was using to sweep and switch to a double guard pull grip. Like this is a grip that you need to win double guard pull battles. So just sweeping right through to the top, sometimes it doesn't really work. Sometimes you have to stop in this double guard pull scenario, establish grips, and then secure top position, which is what happened here. And that's why the sweep kind of looks effortless from the double guard pull onto the top. It wasn't like it was, that was a two part movement, right, Mike? Yeah. It, it, do you agree? Yeah. So he like knocked him over to double guard pull, and then he's got to find a way to get up quickly. And oh, yeah. 
Absolutely. Like, uh, just like with every sweep, just like that basic, like, De La Hiva sweep where you, like, the sickle sweep and stuff that you learn. Like, yeah, you can't, can't just come right up. Yeah. And so this is a good example of the, the inverse just happened right after that. Yeah. This is, there's a great scramble to go over here. So Marigali sweeps, gets on top. And this is my first time seeing this match, but this is, I'm just kind of calling out to you what I'm noticing here. He sweeps. It's not an ideal sweeping position because he came up into the single leg X of Leandro and that's, yeah. Really, Leandro has control, so that it's better than coming up and being with no grips. Like if Leandro had no grips and no control here, it'd be a lot different of a scenario. So he has the opportunity to immediately sweep back, and you can see he wastes no time in that attempt. So he even does the exact same kind of forward and then backwards motion. He off balances forward and then off balances back in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna try and get it just right here. So right here. You can see Marigali's base is kind of uh, blocked by this sign here. But he's got base on the leg. He's got base on his two feet over here. And so he's kind of established his position. The place where he can off ba be off-balanced right now is in this direction, right? Every sweeping, is it's all about off-balancing and then sweeping in them in the opposite direction that you forced the reaction. So uh, Leandro is going to pull him forward slightly. You see he's got the collar grip right here. Very important. What does this grip do? It's not a pushing grip. He's not going to push him in this direction with this grip. He's just going to pull. He's going to do a slight pull. He's going to use this underhook here. This arm that's underhooked is not going to be sweeping him in this direction either. This arm is going to be moving Marigali in this direction as well. So he's got two components to, to pulling him in the direction that he's not even actually intending to sweep him right. And then this leg is kind of pinching in and also pulling him in that direction. So if all of these parts these moving parts are set up to move marigali this way why does the sweep result in this direction so let's find out so it's just a slight pull look he pulls him forward off balances marigali has but, to respect the off balance immediately steps to retain his base because that initial off balance was threatening does that make sense yeah yeah and then, he, and then he gets the foot off of there right or, so now the pant grip the pant grip well, it's less about the pants grip, but remember his base was over here earlier. So yeah. this right foot, this right foot was over here a second ago. And now it's all the way over here. All because Leandro just off balanced him in this direction. Yeah, made him no completely. Him now. Yeah, he made him completely sacrifice this base in this direction just by a pull. And these aren't things that you can like consciously react to and be like, oh, I know he wants to take this base away over here by pulling me forward. I'm just not going to base in that direction. You have to base in the direction that they pull you because it's an actual threatening movement. And if he weren't to base here, if he did not base here, Leandro would have turned it into a, like an X guard sweep, stood up and swept him over in this direction. Right. So he takes the base out. And then immediately is able to sweep him off in the, the opposite direction because he catches that ankle as he steps back. So even though even though Marigali steps forward and then starts to step back again, right here, he's trying to get his base back in this direction over here, but Leandro's hand, it's hard to notice, but he doesn't want to let him get his base entirely back after all that work, and he's going to secure a grip over on Marigali's leg, which is kind of behind him over here. So check it out. Catches on the pants and is able to sweep him up and over. But the difference between Marigali coming up from that double guard pull and Leandro is Marigali put his hands on both of Leandro's pants and came up. Right now, Leandro's hand is on the mat, and he's trying to use momentum to sweep rather than stopping in that double guard pull, pull position, securing the pants, and then just standing up simply. So it's kind of the same position, but you can see that Marigali kind of went about it in a more grit-based, strategic way. And I think that's why Marigali's sweep might have been more effective than Leandro's in this particular instance. So because he didn't get that pant leg, like the pants grip are so, the pants grips are so important from a double guard pull position when one person needs to come up on top because this is the leg in question. This is the base leg. So this leg of Marigali's is the one he needs to get underneath him, do a technical stand up and base it over here somewhere. But when Marigali was in this position, he immediately put both hands onto this control leg. In this position, Leandro's not grabbing this leg. So pay attention to this leg. Marigali is just able to pull it out because it seems like it's kind of trapped in this 50 50 ish position, but yeah. it's not really controlled. So he can just right here. It just is freed and pulled out. But uh, Leandro's right hand was just like on his hip or kind of on the other leg maybe, but it didn't really serve him here. It would have been a lot more effective, I think, to grab that leg that he was able to free. 
But then he'd still, because Leandro is such a game competitor, he finds opportunity in every position. And even though it's like not textbook perfect gripping to like optimize your ability to get up, this the just the aggressive attack opens up more opportunities. And then he actually like collar drags him, it looks like, and starts initiating the str- scramble to sweep off of that. So he still gets the sweep anyways. And I think that's like, yeah. yeah, that's why Le- what makes Leandro so good is that he doesn't do things like by the book, you know, like Marigali kind of does. He does it like textbook and then does it with a, a crazy aggression. Yeah. But Leandro like kind of just fights, you know, and he's not super worried about getting his grips and he'll fight with anything. He, no gi, he fights the same in either position. He's not super grip focused. So there's something else going on with Leandro that I think a lot of people don't understand, including myself, because it's definitely not a technical application that you can identify and be like, why is that guy so good at winning? I think it's just that he will not stop, even if things are not looking perfect. Like, look at the look in his eyes. It's just the look of a crazy man. Oh, yeah. It's uh, an X factor, right? The mindset. That's the hardest thing to figure out. And that's what some of these guys have. Yeah. I think, like, how people say you're your own worst enemy. I don't think Leandro is his own worst enemy at all. Like he's yeah. fully, he's fully in control of his mind and they're, he's aligned mind and body to win. But look, they end up in the same position. And it, this is one of the things that's interesting about Leandro is like, this is the position he just got swept in, but he doesn't care. He's just going to go right back into it. Like if I was fighting Marigali, I'd be like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm not going back into that guard. You just swept me with at all, which is what I do did against him when we fought. It was just like, I know you're really strong from that position. I'm going to avoid it. But Leandro's just like, yep, put me back in it. It's not going to work this time. It's like, why? Why wouldn't it work this time? I don't think I could break it down and tell you why exactly, but he's willing to just deal with it again. Back there again. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll see if, but this time he got his hand out. Did you see that? Yeah. So it's like, it he circled it out earlier. And if you can get your fingers to the outside like this over here, this, this whole lasso grip loses its power. It becomes much weaker. So maybe he was just able to notice that he shouldn't let the lasso grip get as deep. And that's probably going to give him a better chance. So that was a, that was an instance where he regained tempo right there in that moment. So that's a perfect example of tempo, actually, because even though Marigali initiates the grip, you, all you have to do to regain tempo in jiu-jitsu is just break one grip. If you break one of their grips like this, yeah. you immediately get to move. Leandro's arm is going to be free, or at least one part of his body is going to be free, and he's going to be able to initiate atta- an attack with it. So in the beginning of the fight, we didn't see... Um, Leandro able to initiate any attacks because he was purely on defensive because he wasn't able to break any grips because he let Marigali get so tight on those grips. But now he's got that outside hand grip over here and he's just this uh, Marigali's right foot is no longer in control. It's not really doing anything. It's just kind of hanging out there. and He's got this sleeve grip only, but a sleeve grip only is not going to stop Leandro from immediately attacking this leg, which is just free floating right now. He can just clear this leg and just push it out of the way. So he's just going to move around it in this direction move around the leg this way and then drive Marigali's leg in front of him. And then Marigali's lasso will be useless because his hand is on the outside. Leandro's hand. Right here. So he initiates that step through, does the little basic X pass. Isn't really worried about turning that X pass into a pass immediately. It just opened up the game here. He immediately just jumps, gets his hips near as close as he can to Marigali's head. Because if you can get your hips out of the way of the person's guard, that's going to force a huge reaction. So Marigali immediately has to let go of his grips. You can see his hand is right here. He's now pushing. He's pushing instead of pulling. That's when, how you know a match has changed the pace, and the favor is now in Leandro's favor, right? He's got the, the benefit of attack. So he can attack again here. So he moves to the left, and then immediately gets to attack again to the right. So he went left, not with the intention to pass necessarily, but just to start Marigali pushing, and then immediately goes back to the right, and now he's outside of his legs. He's got this almost side smash position here. Marigali's leg is underneath him. And so he's really at this point just fighting Marigali's little hip flexor ability to lift up with just this muscle here as that leg is extended. And then he's got the baby hook. I call these baby hooks. Baby hooks are incredibly good for guard recovery. So it's not the game's not over at this point by any means. But this is the first part of the match where you see Leandro have a def- definitive edge in the tempo. But Marigali is able to recover. But now you can see that Leandro's hand is a little bit more wary about letting him get that sleeve grip back. I'm interested to see if he's going to give it back to him. But I think Marigali kind of changed strategy now too. 
collar switching to these. The, yeah. yeah, collar sleeve. And collar sleeve is like, it's such a good just kind of mix up game. Like guard is kind of like boxing. You have to throw moves out there and you can't keep throwing the same moves. If you keep throwing the same moves, you're going to, they're going to be, they're going to be too predictable and you can get taken yeah. advantage of. This is a it, beautiful sweep. By he's Garzola, really good at that sweep, man. I love when he hits that thing. Yeah, this is a fantastic sweep. It's like one of the only lasso sweeps I, that I feel is really effective. And it's super good against the counter that Leandro is implementing this, this hand here. So now Leandro knows never let Marigali get the full lasso again. Otherwise, he gets swept. So now every single time that Marigali throws the lasso on, he's immediately putting that hand out. Sure. Which is yeah. like a simp it's a simple like habit to build. Yeah. But it saves you from so much. Like yeah. when I was a purple belt and I wasn't doing that, I got yeah. stuck in lasso so much. It's just it a like every match. It's a breakthrough yeah, learning learn that. I remember when yeah, I went to GFT in Rio one time and uh like we're head off and all those guys come in. Like they were they were starting the class warming up with the person just throwing a lasso on, circling behind. And I was like, Yeah, like that's it's one of the when my wife started training a year ago, that's one of the first things I taught her. Like if someone tries to lasso yeah. you do this. Like don't yeah. don't, don't waste all that, that time stuck. Is, it's just such an effective grip break with just the slightest bit of assumption that they're going to throw on a full lasso. You can do it before they do it. So you get to act first because it takes a second for them to wrap up the lasso and you can just do it at the same time and immediately kill their defensive grip they're trying to set up. And that's huge. But a good counter is the move that Marigali is doing right now because these guys are not slouches. Like just you breaking one grip is not going to be the end of the game by any means. So he's just going to throw another attack that's more effective against that grip break, which is this one, which is kind of functioning under the the same principles. Sweeping principles are a lot like judo principles. It's like, well, where is his weight? What's the line of base? The line of base is usually between his feet, and then the third point is usually another hand, or sometimes people base on the head. But his center of gravity is probably about like right here. This is like where Leandro's center of gravity is right now. So he... Uh, Marigali is going to be attempting to sweep him in this direction. This is the direction that he can off balance him because you know, there's not there's no pushing force to sweep him this way, and it's kind of hard to initiate that off balance in this direction from these grips because there's just nothing really driving him over there. But the more people sit down here by just putting his weight directly down, Leandro's weight goes directly down. It kind of gives you this weird leverage on your knee where you can just launch people up and over, and you can see he Leandro goes like full. I mean, the only way to describe it is Leandro going full Leandro and just like. <laughs> being him himself and basing out of these positions, even with that big turn right there. And that kind of base comes with just time. Like, again, I don't think you're going to be able to analyze how that works. That's just Leandro's brain and body just being one. <laughs> and then he survived it and then turns it into an offensive attack. So that's kind of an interesting scramble there too. Like it depends on how, how granular you want to get, but you can kind of see how, he turns this offensive attack that Marigali used in, into his own offense by here, right from this position. So he bases. He's still worried about that hand coming back. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to give that hand back yet. He settles, keeps the knee up to not let Marigali get that Hodger Gracie sweep, probably. And then he pauses for a second. There's a pause, and it's like, okay, what are we going to do now? Marigali's throwing most of his sweep attacks at, at him. Leandro got swept with one. But you can tell, like, this look that Leandro does, he's literally staring into Nicholas's soul right now. And he does that to me, too. And it always is kind of disconcerting when you're fighting Leandro and you just go through a crazy <laughs> uh, scramble. And then he's just staring into your eyes right after. You're like, bro, can we, like, focus on the match? What are you doing? <laughs> it's really weird. And it, it kind of messes with you. And, it, like, those are the kind of things that's like, well, is he doing it on purpose or is it just part of his who he is? And you can't really tell, but I mean, that's a psychological effect that's real and can affect people. And so he immediately goes into another pass attempt. So let's see how he turns this bad situation into a good situation for him. So he's got the deli heave on this side. He's got a pants grip kind of on Marigali's thigh. Marigali has double sleeve control, I believe. And double sleeve control is just not really good against Leandro. If you watch any of his matches from 2010 to 2013, just anyone who plays double sleeves on him just gets annihilated. So he just clears that bottom leg, does a little hop. And this isn't really to pass to the left. It's not to like pass to this side of his body. It's just to get on top of this leg. Like if you can put weight on top of their top leg, again, you're just fighting their little hip flexor muscle, his ability to push the knee up. That's like his recovery movement here. 
And that's very weak in guard players. So this is just kind of a, a move and position that a lot of high-level black belts just try and get to as just a starting point to initiate a passing chain. See how he didn't actually do anything with it? It's just like get Marigali's guard out of position, create a reaction, and then pass back to the right. So he, he initiates the reaction by passing to the left and then is going to continue trying to pass to the right, most likely. I haven't seen the rest of the match, but it seems like that's what he's trying to do. So left, 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 and then he's going to go right. Yeah. But Marigali managed to catch that spider hook. But if he didn't, it would be probably a bad time for him right now. I'm not even sure how he got that. And this is the kind of studying, like if you ever have to fight someone, for our viewers out there, if you ever have to grapple someone and there's a video of what they're doing, you can really just avoid a lot of their prime positions with just some basic grip fighting. So look, Marigali's right leg goes from completely free. It's just floating out here. And he's going to bring this foot somehow all the way into Leandro's left arm. So that's just some crazy dexterity. And I have a little bit of that dexterity as well to just throw a spider hook on in a scramble like this. So he gets it right there. Like, that's accuracy. That happened in less than a second. <laughs> His leg was out here and then just immediately hits that spider hook. And yeah. even though if he had not landed that perfectly, Leandro's literally passed his guard. Like he's passed the knee. If this if this little hook wasn't here, he would be scrambling hard to try and get out of that. It might not have resulted in a pass, but that level of accuracy with your foot to just catch on the sleeve like that is much harder to do than people realize. And that saved him from the danger of that pass. Even though it was a beautifully set up passing chain with all of the the pieces of it perfectly there, like the distraction, applying weight to the weakest part of the opponent's top leg, passing to the left to force the hips to face that side, and then immediately taking advantage of the the, the void space that's been created by passing back to the right. But Marigali was just too good and caught that sleeve grip. And now you can see that uh, Leandro's opted for the pants grip here. Or not the pants, the belt. Putting your hand inside the belt is surprisingly a really effective way to stop lasso controls. For some reason, if you grab people's belts, they can't lasso you very effectively. And I'm not really sure why. Like, I don't really know the body mechanics of it, but you see Lepre do this a lot. And Lucas Barbosa is really good at this. And it's a good way to uh, versus a lasso fighter to just kind of slow down their ability to set up their lasso and force them to do something else. And then he, he just clears it and doesn't hang on to it for too long. But you can commit to that grip as long as you want. But now we start to see, like, what is Mar this is when Marigali starts switching to his submission game. So you can tell when he wants to sweep, he sweeps by attacking the right arm and using his left leg. But when he wants to submit, he attacks the right arm and uses the left leg to shoot the triangle, umaplata, and then last or uh, loop choke with this arm. And he tends to, it seems like he kind of follows this method in his fights. He sweeps first. And then if the sweeps don't work out and he doesn't lead to a passing position where he can take the back, he switches back to submission-based submission yeah. grappling. Well, there, there's points in Marigali matches where he basically just turns into a submission-only match. Like, where he just yeah. ends up on the point. Absolutely. It seems, yeah, that's what happened with me and him. It, it's like he stopped trying to sweep and only went for submissions only. Yeah. I, that, I wonder if that's a mental block or he's just, it's just not an, an optimized I, I way talk of switching between the two. I talked with him what right after you, uh, after your match, like like m like fifteen minutes after your match, when he was like we leaving the place. I was like, "Hey, man!" I was like, "I saw a couple of times when it looked like you could have come up and got the two and one." And he goes, "Yeah, man, I just really wanted to submit him." <laughs> that's, what, that's what he said. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, it's like it's almost like you're you're gonna go at the path of least resistance, and if you're yeah. tired, like we were in that match, fighting to get it's that true. sweep, yeah. it's not guaranteed, yeah. and. If you mess up and you get tired, it's like you can guarantee your loss if you fuck it up. But attacking the submissions from bottom, if you're confident in your guard, that is a little bit safer. It's like you're not going to lose the match. I mean, if you're down on points, you might. But it's like he's gambling on his submission attack versus attacking with a sweep. But this is like a, attacking like submissions to the right side. So he's on the right side. This is where he attacks submissions from. Yeah. And then he sets up the deep Della X when the submission fails. So when he tries to set up the Uma Plata triangle the deep Della X exposes right here. And this is where he switches to double sleeve and lasso. He's going back to submission style. And then when he sees the opportunity to throw that Della, uh, deep Della Hiva, he's going to do it again. Once he feels the Della Hiva, he switches from collar to sleeve, I believe. To actually fully set up. Oh, no that was beautiful. That. Yeah. So let's what? see what happened there. So it looks like Marigali has kind of forgotten 
just decided not to chase the deep Del X anymore. It looks like he's trying to set up Uma Plata. Collar sleeve, Uma Plata. He's trying, he gets the Del Heva. Really committed to this right side grip. Is this what happens? He lifts the leg. Yeah. So somehow Leandro saw this. It, like, this is, this is reaction time. This isn't anything other than reaction time here. Like, this is instinct reaction time and Leandro just being so good at seizing opportunities because you couldn't, like, a, co- a coach could not have told him to do this. And this is why coaching is not as, as all powerful as some people think. Like, a coach would never be able to see this and then be like, oh, there's an opportunity to pass. This exists entirely in Leandro's own head. So the leg comes up and then he catches it as it comes down. So his, the leg comes up here. And he immediately grabs it with his hand. So, oh, so he's got the grip already. So he's got the grip on the top leg already. That's what's happening. So his right hand is on the the leg, the knee grip here. And then he, as Mergali brings his leg up to try and break the grip or throw the lasso, Leandro blocks the lasso with his elbow. And then when he, when the position is failed and the lasso throw didn't work, as Mergali brings the leg back down. Leandro uses that momentum, the movement of the leg, to just do a really simple hop over, like Rodolfo style pass. I'm not sure what that's really called. It's kind of like an X pass. It's kind, uh, it's kind of like that hip grab. Yeah, I guess it's basically an X pass. And he pulls it across, and then just does a little cartwheel. This foot, this foot grip or this foot control doesn't really do much to stop it, and the the same side collar grip is definitely not going to do much to stop it. And he just clears it. And then it doesn't even control the legs. Like, this is an important part. A lot of people, including myself, would have kept the leg control. Like, I would have kept my hand on the leg control and really tried to drive it home for the pass. Like, that's kind of just my style. It's like, once I get a grip, I want to take it all the way and use every um, second that I can to try and force the leg as far out of my way as possible. But Leandro just jumps into the void and just, like, embraces the chaos and just dives on him. And then... Tries to get that right hand to the collar to stop him turning away, but it it's not quite effective. And Marigali manages to turtle. Leandro jumps on the back a little too fast. It's an advantage, by the right? It looks like an advantage. It should be, should be an, an advantage. advantage, depending on the rule set. And now oh, no, minute. not the mermaid sweep. Yeah. Oh, not the mermaid sweep. Oh, it's too yeah. powerful. He is re-swept so fast. Both times he went on bottom, huh? Yeah. He doesn't want to, He doesn't stay there at all. Either he either gets swept into a position he can sweep immediately back with, or he doesn't get swept. Like it's so rare to see Leandro get swept into a position he can't immediately sweep back from. So like into a close guard or into single leg X are the yeah. two positions you mostly see him get swept. So he gets re- he doesn't get swept. He gets reversed into close guard. Marigali stands up, falls for the same bait that I fall for every single time. You stand up, you're tall, you put your legs together to get enough height. You start trying to shrug him off, and he just drops those legs. It's the mermaid sweep. Has double sleeve control. Tilts him over and just comes up because he can do that. So, boom, now he's got the lead. Now, this is where Leandro changes his style. It's like once he's got a point lead, now it's like he's just not going to get swept. Like, I'd, I wouldn't be surprised if Leandro doesn't do anything until the last, like, 30 seconds of this match now. Oh, no, there's already 30 seconds. There's only 30 seconds left. So, yeah, he's just not going to do anything, really. Yeah, good luck. Good yeah, there's no point in him trying to pass or even do anything. He can just kind of chill now. He's literally just looking at the clock, like... <laughs> like, how how is Marigali going to sweep him now? Because Leandro knows that this is not his sweeping side. So if he just keeps that right leg back, doesn't let him get the deep Della X... That's Marigali's entire sweeping game. Then he starts going to the the kind of sporadic loop choke attacks. It's kind of it's interesting. It's almost like a pattern that he does when if he's behind in a match. He does loop choke, huh? He did it with Victor yeah, Hugo and with you. Yeah, just start going for the loop choke. Oh, that's another great match, Victor Hugo versus Marigali. So yeah, we'll have to get some feedback from the the viewers on what kind of analysis they like because. I think I kind of showed you can go so deep into the microcosms of each little grip fight, or you can kind of focus more on like the larger movements, like no, just a great. basic mermaid sweep. Yeah. But I think that, that that fight especially, and not even that fight, but just these two fighters really show just how much the mental game and how you perceive yourself can have an outcome on matches, which doesn't really make sense. Like you would think it's just who trained harder, who has better technique, but it's really will. 
Like you have to will yourself to win. You have to really want it. And I, I think if the less the the less you can force that and the more it comes naturally is when you get guys like Leandro and Marigali who just they're just there and they love it. You know, yeah. they love the fight. They love the intensity. They love the extremism that they bring to the matches and they thrive in these chaotic grappling scramble situations where a lot of people get flustered, including myself. I mean, yeah, it's it's so tough, man. It's people don't realize how hard it is to fight these guys at this level. It's not like these are not normal humans. <laughs> not any like ninety nine percent of more than ninety nine percent. Like literally, there's ten guys in the world that can hang with these guys. Ten. Yeah. Like no one else is gonna be able to win a grappling match versus them. It's crazy. Yeah, and like, like when you said they're, then, they're they're different. They're not normal humans. Like you can feel it when you're at the. You can feel the energy around. Like I mean, it sounds sort of like hippie. Like but like. Marigali walks through the bullpen and like the the waves part to make room for him because it's like a werewolf is coming through, right? Like you can you right. can sort of it's, yeah, yeah. It's like a lion enters the midst, and there's something different about these type of people. Like Marigali, Leandro, Bouchesha, Rodolfo had the same feeling. Even Bernardo Faria was really reaching that point, but he's just such a nice guy that I think he just doesn't let that energy consume him. <laughs> yeah. And I think I kind of suffer from the same thing. You have to like you have to embrace it. Like you have to embrace that primal fighting desire that a lot of men have in them so yeah that was great we what probably great got match. room for for one more uh what uh what match you want to go to next oh man let's see what we got here i mean we could look at another leandro match that versus herberth which is a similar battle of wills like herberth versus leandro is really good um me versus arnaldo that might be a good one. Let's end with something. I because now I can provide like my, what I'm actually thinking. So now that we've okay. gone over two people that I don't actually, um, I don't know what they're thinking. I'm just assuming. Let me go into mine. Wait, which one was it? This one. Make sure my pen is working here. Uh, what did I click last time? This guy. There we go. Cool. So this was actually shown in the the Ronin documentary. So yeah. this was my first match in the Open at Worlds 2019. I want to skip forward. Sometimes they just leave this running for a minute before it starts. Yeah, there we go. Refs are carrying yeah. their chairs out. Yeah, I remember he rushed you right off the bat. Yeah. So I think if you if you watch how I roll, I'm a very slow starter and. I think that's kind of just become common knowledge across the circuit that you kind of have to blitz me because the longer the match goes on, the better chance I have of winning, it seems like. And I think that's just because I'm so grip focused and not really, I don't really operate under that same aggression meter that a lot of the successful guys operate under. It's like for me to win, I have to get my grip sequences. Like if they don't, if they don't happen, I'm, I'm struggling because I just can't keep up on like an athletics perspective. So I mean, there's certain guys I can still hang with if it's like full scramble mode, but for like the beast beasts, like the the, the real deal guys, like Leandro and Marigali, it's like I have to get my grips or I'm in trouble. And you saw I was in trouble with Marigali. But so this one, I fought Arnaldo quite a few times. He has a really threatening Lasso Uma Plata game, and he's actually one of the guys that really drilled it into me that I have to weave my hand out constantly to avoid those Lasso grips. So I pull guard. I wasn't really as worried about getting the lapel immediately against Arnaldo because I was confident just my open guard would be able to handle him, but I managed to secure the lapel pretty quickly. Um, and this is just one of the powers of the lapel is like once you get the lapel, even when things look bad, like this position looks like it would be bad, but because I have, have the, oh, yeah, I have, have the it. lapel oh. here. Yeah, yeah Dan Lucart. Dan Lucart calls this the chair of thorns guard. So what happened was I I pulled. I didn't make an immediate move for the lapel, but my left hand here is reaching to open the lapel right here. And he immediately starts to pass, and I just do a quick inversion, and I use the inversion to secure the lapel grip as I spin underneath. So I get it with my left hand here as I invert, yeah, spin through, and now I have the lapel off the, the transition. And then once you have that, it's like as long as you keep it in between your legs, no matter which way they pass, you'll still have a lapel to anchor yourself on. So I get this is called the chair of thorns position. Ask Dan Lucard about the naming of that guard but basically here you can kind of like like the lapel is wrapped around him or wrapped around my leg and it's the this lapel i believe so you're basically 
making him carry your weight still, even though he's on top of you. So it's kind of a weird abstraction of how jujitsu works, which is why lapel is kind of difficult for some people to pick up because it doesn't operate under the same rules. And this hook right here is just going to make it so that he can't get any further around my body. So I have this, I have the grip here like this and he wants to move this way. Right. And I'm posting on my toes here. This is a really important toe maneuver because this maneuver with your foot by turning your heel up on this really grotesque angle that's happening lets you like drive your hips up into him. So by driving my hips up into him, it immediately, it lets me go into like a Granby roll position and that redirects a ton of pressure when someone gets around your hips like this. So this kind of puts you into a, a good scrambly position where if you, f you fail the Granby, you rock back up to your hips and your elbow and then you just do it again. So like once I get up like this, I'm just going to roll through again and it just resets it over and over again. And you can kind of just stay ahead of a passing chain by doing that over and over utilizing baby hooks and just keeping your hips in front. That's a very difficult skill to teach. It's that's that's a lot more of just time and my kind of personal swag, you know? Yeah, and watching it live, it looks like you're in a lot of trouble, but you're pretty comfortable there with that chair of thorns and everything and, and knowing that position, huh? Yeah, like I I've people like the lapel guard for me was not just something that I just started doing recently. It's been integral to so much of my game over the last eight years and I've I've put it through the ringer against the best in the world and I'm very comfortable in even the bad positions that I find myself in. Like even if you put me in the worst possible lapel position, I've probably spent 10 times more time there than you ever have, you know? So I just have an inherent advantage once I grip a lapel and a, that's why I have such tunnel vision on it because it's just, I know it, it always serves me well. And like, if I just abandon it completely to try and do normal jujitsu, it's just, it's a difficult mental block to get through. Um, sure. And so here you can kind of see like a difference in passing style of, of how Leandro passes versus how I pass. Like Leandro kind of gets to that base position with his knee up and just kind of waits and then passes off counters. Um, I usually just take what my opponents give me. Like if they put me into a position like this, I'm just going to pass with like basic over under passing pressure. Like I'm not going to try and get to my passing positions. I just I'm going to try and clear this bottom ankle. So one little thing you can do in this particular position. Um, most people probably don't catch this detail, but like. His leg is here. Most people leave their foot on the other side, but I actually use my ankle. This is my foot right here. And it's trap. It's like a shin uh, windshield wipe over his ankle. So what this is going to do is when I start moving my hips around this way, he, his right leg can't really stop me because I'm not on. If I was on this side of his right leg, he might be able to stop me. But because he's not, only this left leg can stop me. So this knee right here is the only mount of defense he has and if i can just clear my hips over this little end of his knee that's all i have to do to initiate a pass and then all that's left is just his right arm right here his right arm on my cross collar to try and just stiff arm me away but this little detail here is what it lets me kind of initiate this passing sequence so i just step up over the knee this is kind of a similar style of like body lock passing but in the gi you don't need the body lock and because i had my right foot you can see my leg here is still over the ankle. Like it looks like he should be able to put me in half guard, but because I did that little windshield wipe over his ankle right from the beginning, it lets me just clear it, it really easily. And a lot of times if you do it kind of quick, people can't really see what's happening. And then you'll see it again right here kind of. And I tried to go back into a side smash position, but I wasn't able to. He tries to hit some elevations and I'm just keeping this is like kind of Murillo style like yeah. Keeping your butt high up in the air like this. I've been thinking about make... the entire time. Yeah. I haven't seen, like, I've only picked up stuff by grappling against Murillo in competition, but this is like, this body positioning is so difficult to deal with. Like, I will never pull guard against Murillo because once he gets to this body positioning, your legs just can't do anything. Like, he's just passing your knees and that's it. Your feet don't get to play the game. And that's 90% of my guard is my feet you know, posting on stuff. But once he gets to this deep position, your feet just have to grab each other. Look, you can only just like hold on for dear life. And I'm not even good at this position. It's just the position is strong. Like Marilla would have passed there already. I have to like kind of back out and do more long step style stuff because that's what I'm actually good at. Underhooking the leg, trying to separate th this lock here because this lock is giving him unity in his legs. Like he can move his legs as one and that'll be more powerful than the sum of its parts, right? So I'm trying to kind of create some separation here. When I get to the positions like this after a scramble, I kind of like think like, okay, what's the situation? Am I up on points? What do I need to do next? 
And that's part of the reason I have slow paces in the beginning is I kind I, I spend too much time thinking during matches. If I could just go out and fight and not think, I think I'd do a lot better. Um, so this is where Mer, uh, Arnaldo's really strong is this Uma Plata position. He always gets me in it, but luckily deadlift deadlifting can help you. And then he mermaid sweeps me. How embarrassing. <laughs> It's, that's another one of my weaknesses. That was some, That's like a bad habit because I know it happens to me constantly. And so every time I'm in training, I always think like, okay, op, like open your legs a little more, have a wider base in this position. And it's just so difficult to see coming and predict. It looks like they reset us and I immediately get squid guard. So that doesn't seem fair. <laughs> Why did they just let me get squid guard? Did I have it? Oh, I had the lapel. So he sweeps me and I had the lapel. Okay. You cheat here. I have the lip you just cheat. And it, take seem guard it seems like I. It seems like I was cheating. Yeah. So I get the lapel, <laughs> and then I right as they start the match, I just set up squid guard instantly. Yeah, that doesn't seem fair. So, I mean, that's just part of competition, though. It's like they're all. You always have to fight for your grips when you the come reset. back to the middle, because yeah, you never know what's going to happen. Like they might try and cheat or use their like move their hands or move your grips or get better grips themselves, and so you kind of just have the instinct to just fight for them actively as the referee sets yeah. you which is kind of what happened here and this is something that we we watch on saturday match rewind all the time where we're like we're always noticing resets that, that start in a completely different position it happens all the time yeah yeah so when i when i used to train at lloyd's that was one of the big th emphasis they put on training is like always fight for resets even in the room so I, I got really good at fighting for resets and kind of there's a subtle way to do it that um doesn't it's like very inobvious like if you don't make it an obvious thing you're more likely to get the grips that you want. So, and then also like making sure that the ref see, like, I don't know if you saw here. So when, when he sweeps me and the guy stops, I don't let go of the lapel until he makes me let go of it. Like I just hold, like he says Pato or whatever. And then I just wait like half a second. So he knows. And I'm like, okay, I want, I have that. So at least I know that I get to start with the grip that I had. And then you kind of do that little subtle disingenuous battle for grips you don't deserve. It's just a byproduct of the rules. This was like, that's total bullshit, though. They shouldn't have let me start with this. I don't know what that, what the hell that was. <laughs> um, yeah, because squid guard, once you get a full lapel guard like this, it's basically like starting in close guard or any sort of guard that just has immense control. And then this is a, this is a common sweep. This is like a derivative of Cobrina's lapel plata yeah. position. But he literally umplages the lapel, and I started figuring out it works much better as like a waiter sweep application. So if you look, it's actually almost the exact same mechanics as a waiter sweep, except instead of my right leg going on the inside of his leg and then coming up like this, it's just on the lapel. So the lapel has replaced what the waiter sweep would be on his leg. Incredibly effective. Um, I think it's because the instead of like a waiter sweep, the pressure to knock him over this way is at his hips. But when you have the lapel, the pulling power comes from up here. Yeah. So he gets pulled from like a higher angle. And I think that just gives you more leverage or something. But this definitely feels stronger than a normal waiter sweep, which is why it's like one of my main sweeps you see me hit. You get the buck grip in, in going yeah. you, got, you got a lot of leverage on him. Yeah, especially when they sit like this. And then you start to get you start to use this leg as like a pendulum so it's to swing up sweep, and yeah, then swing down. With the lapel. Because yeah, the waiter, yeah, sweeps that's OP, all... waiter, waiter sweep's OP to begin with. And then you add that lapel in there. Yeah, I think I heard John Danaher say one time that the, the lapel is like a force multiplier, and it really is. It's like it's like using just another tool to generate more leverage. And so, like, sure, I could sweep him with waiter sweep here, but if he was – see how his weight's so heavy on me? Like, his weight's, like, on my neck right here. If my leg was under there too, I'd probably just be too inverted. See how my spine is straight? Yeah. If he had his weight on top of my thigh, I would be, like, fully – curled up underneath and then i wouldn't have the same ability to use this pendulum motion with my leg which is like using the free leg as a pendulum with lapel guard movements is so powerful like this so i build up a bunch of potential energy i try and get my weight as high as humanly possible so that i can just drop it all to the ground and i don't have to use muscle i'm just using weight so i just build up a bunch of leverage at the peak and then right at the the peak of that where i can't get my body any higher than i feel all i have to do is just let it all drop and so now he has to catch all of my weight falling in this direction at the speed of gravity right and if that's enough i can kind of launch him over and that's the same way i swept leandro the, the only first and only time i ever beat him is a similar maneuver 
And then the powers of the lapel just extrapolate tenfold when you can sweep right into passing positions with them. Like most sweeps don't result in a strong passing position, but that's why the the worm passing system is so effective too, is like you sweep right into passing positions. You just are fully stacked. You have a lapel, you have their leg pinned, and you just can immediately initiate a pass right off the sweep. That's that's one of my biggest strengths, I think, is just lapel sweeps resulting in passes right off the sweep a lot of the time when a lot of sweeps don't do that. And that's just a byproduct of me kind of trying to optimize that double guard pull situation where if you if you land in that half sweep position where you're like both double guard pulled, if you have the lapel, you don't have to switch grips like Marigali did in his match with Leandro. He had to switch grips and then stand up. But with the lapel, you don't have to switch grips. You just have leg control always off the initial sweep and you can just come up because you have their leg controlled so they can't do their technical get up to defend it. Did you notice our scorekeepers have you have as KK James here? Yeah, I, I kind of I want that to be my new alias. <laughs> That's a sick name, <laughs> KK James. Here's another. This is another little interesting thing that I discovered and started using. So, like, I think this is usually called the crazy dog pass, but everyone puts their knee on the outside of their wrist. So most people put their knee opposite to how this is. So my wrist is on the outside of my knee here. Yeah, it's like behind my knee, but everyone else puts their knee on the other side. But I started putting my knee on the inside, and it gives you crazy leverage to extend their leg. I don't know what to call. I just call this cross grip passing. But you just kill so much of their guard game because he's not. He's not. He can't play half guard against me. He's only forced to play half butterfly. He has to play half butterfly and just like a lame collar sleeve that doesn't really give him any control. Yeah. And then and then I'm just gonna put my head in his shoulder and just use that to put pressure. And he only has one option. He has to turtle or let me pass. Yeah. That's There's that's no other option. That's basically the, the only way I can pass a good person's guard is cross grip going to the left. I can get him one time with it, and then they know that just don't let me get those grips anymore. It's yeah, so... It, OP, for sure. Yeah, it really is. It's so powerful. So it, it failed, but it's also like you don't really have to try hard. Like, just making the move is a win. That's kind of how I roll. It's like, I don't have to give everything I have to this position, but if I make him stand up while carrying my weight... That's one rep that I, he had to do that I didn't have to do. And that's going to add up over the course of a 10 minute match. So here I'm not really trying hard, but he has to stand up and like fight out of that position that used energy. And then he immediately goes right back to where he was. So what was the point of the movement? It was purely to defend my attack. Yeah. So you just had to do a burpee in the middle of our fight. <laughs> like you, can, you can't do that very many times before it starts to wear you down. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of why I like IBJF point systems because 10 full minutes lets you kind of win a battle of attrition. And it's not, not like I'm in better shape than these guys. It's just I'm trying to be efficient with my movements rather than like make sure each movement works perfectly. It's just like make sure each movement makes them move more than it makes me move. And that kind of strategy is, yeah, it's, it's got its, its pros and cons for sure. So he sweeps me and then, yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. It looks, so it looks like he goes for that kind of Marigali. Lasso sweep that Marigali's. Yeah, yeah, the Marigali sweep. And my knee is out of position. I don't have good base. I can't get my right leg up in time. So he tilts me to my shoulder. So my only option, if you see, you can see at the last second, I go with it. Because if I resist it any longer, I'm going to get swept cleanly. So it's like right when I feel the, the breaking point, I just hop all the way over to overcompensate for the roll through. And again, that's not like conscious. It's just like, well, I'm going anyways. Might as well just give it some more power and go so far that the sweep is not as effective as it could have been. Looks like you thought Baron Bolo for a second there. Yeah, but then I saw, I knew Mikey was watching and I didn't want him to think I was jacking his swag. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I've actually been Baron Bowling a little bit lately in training. I've kind of enjoying it. Um, so the one little thing here is we're in double guard pull position and I have the, the cross pants grip. I immediately get cross pants grip because if I get cross pants grip, that means that I can stand up first most of the time. So like my bottom leg is controlled by him with this little arm control here and he's got control of my top leg. Um, so we'd both can technically do a technical stand up, him clearing this leg and me clearing this leg and we would end up with just a neutral position again. But because I have the height advantage, that just means that I can put a, that much more pressure onto his legs and keep him down just for a split second longer than he can keep me down. So a height, like height advantage matters. And then I clear my leg, and I'm, I don't know which way I'm going to come up. Or if I come up at all, I don't honestly don't remember. Oh, yeah, so he kind of just lets go because he didn't have a secure pants grip. So the double guard pull battles like that, 
of who gets on top first in these in critical positions like that, it's very important. And that's a definitely a different perspective from like lighter guys like Mikey and Tommy. They don't necessarily want to end up on top. They want to find crab ride options from there and like invert and try and take the back from those positions because they have more mobility in their bodies. They're smaller so they can fit in between legs a little bit easier. They can hit those rotations a little bit easier. But if I try and start inverting too much, it's like my legs and arms are too long. They're just going to get caught on something. Someone's going to grab them. It's it's a little bit more difficult for me, even though I was a big Barambola guy back in the day. Oh, not oh. the mermaid suite again. So embarrassing. Please, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> How does this happen to me? Looks like you didn't even try on that one. <laughs> you you know, dude, that. the move just comes out of nowhere. I just can never see it coming. Every single time. It just every single time. I never see it coming. My legs aren't even that close together. Do I just have weak legs? I just need to do more like those. Uh, like, this muscle here, like your whatever this muscle is on either side, like I just can't keep my legs apart. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta you like do, you need to do that thing where you move your legs in and out. At the, 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 uh, yeah, the, the good girl, girl back girl machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta go get on get some reps in on that. Seriously, because damn, this is bad. Like, look at that. My legs just collapse completely. There's like no support there. Wow, huge flaw. And then he lands in like perfect side smash position. I would have lost this match if this was in, if this was anyone else, and like I hadn't fought Arnaldo so many times and had such a point lead. Like a lot of people could have really taken advantage of that and just crushed my guard right in that position. But I had a pretty big point lead, so he probably didn't want to commit to it. But that's so bad to get swept right into like a passing position. It's just miserable. One of the worst passing positions. I know it's that's that's awful. Oh, this is a this grip he does is actually really strong. I remember this position. This sort of like cross grip, but like holding it on your shoulder here, catching your foot. It makes it very difficult to recover your guard. Um we'll kind of speed up towards the end here, because I think the final scramble is happening. Just a little collar sleeve. I think at this point when I when I have a lead this big, I don't really go for A game anymore. I just try and play a little give a little variety. As I go for a reverse Della Worm instantly. <laughs> oh, oh no, yeah. So it goes straight to reverse Della Worm here. And really, re all reverse Della Worm is, is it's just Marigali's deep Della Hiva position, but there's a force multiplier of the lapel. So because I have the lapel, it's just more secure, and you can really lock someone in place, but it's essentially the same mechanism as, a, um, as Marigali's sweep. Except I go for the pants, and you don't have to cross your legs. And then it turns into the, kind of a Barambolo match. But the lapel locks his leg so he can't like escape and get it straight into a single leg X. You can go to mount, and then a lot of times people give the arm. But that yeah, that's just a smooth back take. Yep. I don't know what they're waving off here. And this is something I actually picked up training with um, the Hinzo guys, or wa well, watching them more than anything, like. I noticed that in Nogi, whenever they take the back, they immediately throw the rear naked choke on all the time. Yeah. But in Gi, people always reach for the collar instead of going for the rear naked choke. And I found that if you don't reach for someone's collar, they lift their chin. So I just stopped reaching for people's collars and just started waiting a little bit longer. Look, see how he doesn't tuck his chin because I'm not reaching for the collar? Yeah. I'm not threatening the choke. So he thinks there's no choke. But then if you, like... He's not tucking his chin because he doesn't think I'm going to rear naked choke him because no one rear naked chokes in the gi. Yeah. But then you just get up over the shoulder and it's too late. It just happens so quickly that if they didn't tuck their chin in time, the rear naked choke is super viable. No gi. Or I mean in the gi or no gi. I don't get why people don't do it in the gi. I don't know if they go for it. Yeah. yeah, no one goes for it. They just reach for the collar instantly. And, the, and then the second you reach for the collar, it's like, oh, he's trying to choke me. So they don't. But if you just like wait a second, a lot of times their chin stays up. That's all. That's like what jujitsu is: is just noticing little patterns and taking advantage of them. Or for me, at least, I try and just find little things like that. But yeah, that was a, that was a great match as well. Let's pull up AJ versus Kashino. I want to see your thoughts about the nunchuck routine. I want to I want to get some analysis on that. All right, let's get these nunchucks. Look at this guy. You see me? I'm gonna make an appearance here behind AJ. Look at this. Oh, nice. Look at that. Look at that form you got. What do you What do you What do you got there? Is that your camera? Yeah, yeah, I'm holding a camera. Oh, look at that. Okay, so he's got the outside spin. He goes for the double behind the back crossover, over the shoulder, in front, hits the double twirly twirl. My favorite is when he comes back and he hits the double crotch slapper extreme. He starts throwing it on right here. Here it is. Double crotch slapper extreme. Goes around to the, the hip 
twist redux. Back to the twirly twirl. Got no stuff. Double crossover again. Goes into the Bruce Lee routine. He's really improved since the last time I saw him messing around with nunchucks. I think he's got a while. bright future in this. Yeah, it, this it goes on uncomfort- uncomfortably long. That's for sure. <laughs> I think right about here we were all done. Okay. Oh, he keeps it going though a little bit. It's just casual now though. <laughs> It seems like that signified that it was over, but then he just kept going. Yeah. A little bit of a kata, and then that's it. Okay, good. Is he done? <laughs> go go near the end. Let's, let's find the part where Keishinho goes from an omoplata to an arm lock at one point. He passes his guard pretty early. Uh, how how far in do you think this is? Like, I don't know. Keep going. You'll see it. There's a it's, an, it's a classic AJ extended arm lock. Oh, no. The one that lists, it hurts to watch, but he seems fine after each time. Oh, here it is, Umaplata. There's a couple Umaplatas, though. Let's, let's see if we keep oh, this going. Is... This is a long match. Yeah. Probably off of this. Yeah, I think off of this. Yeah, oh, yeah. We Go is. over this this whole sequence before he gets to the... Go to, go to the Umaplata. Okay. So, okay, let's preface this. AJ was on my other show, who's number one yesterday, and he let me know that all of this stuff was all just a plan that he let Keishinho do this to him. So, know that going into Genius. It. Yeah. Right. We're not worthy of competing in the same battleground as AJ when he's operating on such a high level of strategy. Oh, that was oh sick. Yeah. No, Keishinho was on point in this match. He was all over the place. Flying triangle. He's got the inside collar control, so you can't stand up. From this point, it's like you you don't get out of this kind of umplata. It's like... Got that collar control. Yeah, that collar control in between the legs is so powerful. People didn't used to do that. That's pretty recent. That's like 2013 is when people started doing that. From what I, I haven't seen Uma Plata's use that grip in the past before that. I could have missed it though. Switches to Mono Plata and then into the straight the straight arm lock. So the reason AJ doesn't get his arm broken in these positions is uh, this is actually one of his best techniques. See how his shoulders are aligned here? This is the exact same thing that Vinny did versus Verdum at ADCC 2011. Remember that match? Yeah. No, on, on the concrete. That one was nasty. Yeah. Yeah, this is the position. Because what's happening is he, his shoulders are aligned straight up and down, whereas most arm locks, your shoulders are not at this angle. They're at the, the right angle of that, which is more flat, and that let, lets you get a ton of pressure. But when your shoulders are in the air like that, for some reason, it takes a lot of the pressure off the arm. I mean, he might get tapped with this. Anyways, yeah, he does. But it's like, oh, no, he didn't tap. Oh, the oh, foot didn't. on the face. That's an yeah. AJ classic, too. He likes to Get eat the there. foot to the face. Right back to the... Right back to the uh... Yeah. this is, I, I did this exact same maneuver against Sean Roberts when he almost armbarred me off that Sayanagi. What, this is kind of the same... Is that Kumite? No, no. We, we fought a, a Dan Lucart in-house tournament one oh, time. It was that. just yeah, a... Right. Yeah, and he just, like, right off the bat sayanagi me right into an arm walk. And, uh... This is a very effective escape. It's very effective. But AJ definitely tapped there, too. Think he tapped? Yeah, look at his fingers. He didn't? Uh, it sure looks like he tapped. You fought AJ. What's it like trying to tap AJ? Is it just super frustrating or what? Yeah, it is pretty frustrating. I did tap him each time, though, I think. That looked like a tap to me, but I think he was just w wiggling his fingers in. And then he hits the hitchhiker escape. Classic AJ right Solid. there. So there's there's no submission in this. Oh, match, right here. Right? No, w watch this next. Uh, they go from that omoplata to this roll here. Yeah, you get into some funky positions here. Yeah, the Uma, omoplata crucifix is pretty brutal. Let's see what Kishino does here. We got a few minutes left. AJ's got that behind the back ankle grip there. There's there's not much you can do here. Just kind of ride it out and hope that pe they, the omoplata just loosens up. Yeah. And AJ's tough as shit, though, man. Or, He's super tough. That guy whatever. could get hit by a truck. Yeah. You can say what you want about AJ, but yeah, he doesn't give up. No, he's good training, honestly. Yeah. I trained with him a few times. He's super tough training. What's Kishino like, up to here? We all give him here? a hard time, but... What's Kishino up to here? Trying, it's, just just the, it's just the Umaplata yeah. infinite loop, you know? You can sweep with it, stay in the Umaplata. You can roll back through to the Umaplata. You can go to the crucifix over and over again. That's basically it. That's the match. He's like, shoot on me, shoot on me. He's like, oh, you don't, you don't, you don't fight MMA like me. 
any grappler that doesn't fight MMA is not a real fighter. Yeah, I mean, exciting match, honestly. I think that was a great match. Dude, you should go rewatch the whole... We didn't have enough time to do it, but you should go rewatch the whole thing uh, Thing sometimes. It was... Uh, Ishin was all over and passed his guard early on. I mean, it was, a, it, was a, it was a great match. Yeah. Ishino didn't yeah, stop I, attacking. Uh, I like it. Man, that was... Uh, that was pretty cool. That was fun. That was I, I like this format, uh the way we did this. We gotta figure out some matches to do next week. Uh what do you think? You got anything that you got in mind that you want to watch? I'll have to go through the archives. This is a unique opportunity because I, I always avoided analyzing stuff because I couldn't use it ever. But I mean, now we got we we can do it. So I mean the world's our oyster. We can analyze whatever we want. I think going back and analyzing some of the older classics would be really good. I yeah. like I would really like cuz I always talk about the how the meta changes in jiu-jitsu. I would love to be able to access some of the early flow footage and show that is it, it actually did change and that the style has changed and the game changes over time depending on what's like more effective. Yeah, well, so next we time have, I'll I'll be ready. We have Worlds and like World Pro and stuff all the way from 2016, I believe. Yeah, 2016 was the first year, so 2016, 17, 18 a bunch of like Abu Dhabi World Pro stuff. I be all the IBJJF basically besides Brazileto. Uh yeah. obviously ADCC. Uh, if you ever want to do Nogi, we got Nogi World stuff, Kasai, yeah. Copa Podio, ton of stuff. Yeah, and I, there's there's a few different types of analysis I want to go through. It's like there's the technical like gripping grips gripping analysis and then there's like the mental side of things like we kind of saw with Leandro and then there's like the Enigma style analysis where guys like Kynan and Gordon are doing things on such a different wavelength and it's successful. And I, I think it's important to kind of dive into why, like yeah. why is what they're doing so successful when it looks different from every, everyone else's. And I mean, I don't really have the answers t for that myself, but I think there's definitely some discussion to be had there to try and find a, find the answers. Yeah. I think maybe we should make a post at some point this week. It'll be like, what matches you want to see next week? Maybe somebody will have a, a good idea that we didn't think of. Yeah, but absolutely. All I mean, right. the, the collective knowledge is much greater than ours, that's for sure. That was amazing, uh, Keenan. Uh, and like we said earlier, the uh, right after this, the movie's going to debut, so I guess we'll close it out if we can just go ahead and roll that trailer. And, uh, yeah, we'll watch this thing. And, yeah, watch the movie, Ronin, the, the year of Keenan Cornelius. Yep, coming up right after this. Does that so, so much better than I do is he really is, like, super strict to a schedule. And I'm, like, a lot more, like, free-flowing, like, just train how you want, man. It obviously works because we have such great results coming out of this gym. Do you see there is big news in jiu-jitsu? Do you see who got booted out of his school? Keenan Cornelius got kicked out of Atos, Atos or he was shut, asked to leave. Shut yeah. the front door. Keenan is gone for his first world title. Keenan has done a lot for this sport. We're in a weird position in jiu-jitsu now where people make their livings off of being different. Suddenly, Keenan is left on his own, no gym to train at, no black belts to train with. What's he gonna do? I've kind of been forced into this situation. I would like to have a place where I can train consistently. He has had um, a rocky road on his way to this world. So that sets up Marigali versus Keenan. Yeah, that's a it's a good year. It's a good year.